All right, here we go. I guess it's Labor Day, uh, September, whatever that day is. Anyway, I'm laboring. <laughs> so now I got to get caught up. I'm almost done, folks. So what we got here is a, I think it's a 2018 E450 with the famous V10 in it. The test will work too also with uh, the, v, uh, the V8. So this is a E450. Hold on, got a lot of bouncing around. Some of you don't like that, right? That's a Thor, I think it is, right? Hold on. It's a 24HE. All right, so we'll walk back around here. I'm going to have to show you how to take the doghouse off or the engine cover that's in between the two seats up front. All right, so that's off already. Now, some of me, this is the main fuel connector. There's only one that says fuel on it. It's not, it doesn't have a return system on it. Um, this is the evap right here. This is the vapors that get drawn up. And this goes click, 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 and draws in the vapors into the engine manifold. So what we're going to do is take this little red thing off first. All right. Now, that's a safety clip, folks. And what I'm talking about is... Always on the opposite side. I've had a couple people email me. Hey, I got a problem testing this. And so on the other side is this little push connector right here. Right there. It looks like that. All right. And then you, if you see it, look. Just it pushes up a little bit. You can see it barely letting go. See the little clips right in there? All right. So we're going to take this off. We're going to push it. We've got to watch out for fuel. Should have a rag, but... I already know what's wrong. You see that? Didn't hold no pressure. So we're gonna put this fuel tester in there and hook it up. Go, hey, what's wrong? And I'll put that fuel number down there. But I had some parts, so I'll, I made it over. I'll, so we'll put this on there. There you go. Click, and it goes click. And then I bring this one up right there. You go. And I'll put it in there. There you go click and then I put a fuel pressure gauge on it right there okay and we're gonna see hope it don't leak let me put it outside real quick these are the specs it's key on engine off so it's to be 55 to 60 psi and stay there at least 20 30 minutes it's called a prime signal as soon as you turn the ignition this is the e450 commercial aft rear of the axle um 55 gallon standard so i got it hooked up here's your key you got it in there you go now watch the gauge it's supposed to go all the way up to there and it's not see it right there 50 55 so I'll put it up there I'm gonna turn the key I'm not gonna crank it I'm just gonna turn it to where the dash lights are on right here it's called key on engine off or priming it made a feeble attempt no this is dropping down real quick all right folks this thing isn't holding back there I'll prime it a couple times Yeah, look at that, just bleeding out. Hey, whoa, it made up to 20 something. All right, so I'm lucky because the owner brought it back with uh, not too much in it. Um, a little bit under a half, so I'm going to pump some of this out. And you go, well, you know, there you go. So there's a couple ways to do it to pump it out, but that's. Uh, that's the problem. So I'm going to go get the fuel pump assembly and I'm going to show it to you. All right, I got a brand new one. I got to drop the tank. I knew about this before, but he wanted to go camping, so he brought it back. Hopefully, I can get it dropped today and back in, but uh, yeah, it's hot out there. It ain't too bad in here. It stays about 10 degrees cooler in here than it does out there, and it's like 92 out there. All right, put you on pause. I'll be right back with the fuel pump module. Okay, a lot of you are like, oh man, I can save a lot of money. I can get this one off of Amazon. It's cheap. One. No, don't do that. 
This is a E450, 55 gallon tank. It's back air. Notice I got jacked up on, it's like four, six inches high. It's four, one and a half inches going up. So this is continuously under a load, folks. It ain't like a, a van that, you know, they put carpet in it, take it down the road, drop it off, bring it back. So what it is, if you look this up, this is a PFS 9731X, but it's AC two zebra nine hotel 307 D. And if you look this up, I'll show you the website. Um, it says for cutaway bands. Now, of course, this is the fuel sending it. But what, what I'm trying to show you is because people don't take care of their system. Uh, it has a fuel pressure regulator in it, built in. Okay, here's the fuel pump. It goes up into here, right there. Uh, and then this is the, because that's not used, the return. That's for the generator right there, okay. That's a return or a generator, all right. And then this, this is the one line that goes up. So this is the re, uh fuel pressure regulator so this is sitting down inside that big tank because you refuse to run your engine every month that is sitting back here and you refuse to put in um there's some kind of stuff right there they, they sponsor me folks all i get is my stuff for free diesel pusher you just go there tell them you belong RV Dionysus and you get your percentage off. I don't get the money off of it. I don't need it. I, just, I get my stuff free. That's good enough. That saves me 200 bucks a year. There you go. So, um, place folks, use fuel additive. Uh, it's just gas, but, you know, and diesel does the same thing, but there's different manufacturers, but I tell you what, if you do the independent study on the guy that has a YouTube channel that did the hot shots. He compared it against a lot of people, and it's in the top three. That's pretty good. Lubricity, corrosion, uh, just all kind of stuff. Anti-gelling. All right. Remember, they... And all that sediment. And please, when you store your RV, fill the tank all the way up max. But put in the additive first. All right. So now you know causes that junk gets picked up by the fuel pump right right here okay and it uh doesn't do good folks right there and it gets in here the little diaphragm gets clogged and all and this is a lifetime fuel filter so there's a fuel filter in here they call it a lifetime there is no fuel filter on the frame rail this is a 2018 folks all right so this is where the little canister the uh, metal can you used to change out and you know the little plastic things would break off on them or whatever they're gone that's a life all right so now not only are you you know you've got to keep your fuel clean you've got to keep it uh, a fuel additive in there you saw here how i had to do it remember i had to take the red lock off and there was a button that i had to push right on that side right there and this thing, once it powers up, it's supposed to hold, folks. This is draining right back. Balls are on it. Hold on there. Isn't that something? 13,000 something. Can you see it? All right, 13,992. Not even 14,000, folks. See if you can get them. There you go. Look at that. All right. So this is what killed this pump itself. I think is like six, seven hundred from a dealer. But I got a direct Ford link for you. Uh, Ford find it parts or something like that. I'll put it in the comments down below. It was half that price. You are getting the original Ford pump. That is a Ford pump for a E450 cutaway van, and it says motor home. Because the volume is different than that of a regular, okay? So thank you very much. It's Jeff from RV Diagnostics. We just did a fuel pressure test. What were they supposed to be doing? All right, let me show you the sheet again. Uh, 
All right, let me get down here. All right, so. Key on engine off, 50, 55 to 60. Key on engine running, 55 to 60. It is a commercial chassis, aft of axle. For you boat people, you know, it's rear and a standard 55 gallon. All right, so we're not meeting them requirements. Have hard start, long cranking. Yeah, it might start good when it's cold because it enriches the fuel mixture. But when it gets hot, it takes a long time or idle issues or... Uh, please, folks, all this could have been avoided. <laughs> so, not even 14,000 miles on it. Uh, this is going to run in between the parts and the labor probably 1,200 bucks. All because you won't use a fuel additive and you won't take it out once a month and drive it around. Or at least start the darn thing up and back and forth in the driveway a couple times to get all the seals lubricated. Um, then again, RV, repair the vehicle, read volumes of information. This is Jeff from RV Donosics. Thank you. I'll probably be making another video after I put the fuel pump in and all. I'm going to do some tests there. Bye-bye.